Hi, I'm Timothy Purcella, and this morning I'm doing some business calculus for my Math 1325 class. Uh, here we're finding second derivatives. Uh, remember that f double prime refers to the derivative of f prime. The derivative of a function is a function. You can differentiate functions, therefore you can differentiate f prime. In order to find f double prime, first thing you got to do is find f prime. So they give us a function f of x equals 3x plus 4 to the fourth power. They want us to find the second derivative. Then they want us to evaluate the second derivative at 0, 1, and negative 3. Let me push this up. So my function is f of x equals 3x plus 4 to the fourth power. I can't just skip to the second derivative. First we find the first derivative, f prime of x. That's a quantity raised to a power, so we'll use the generalized power rule. Bring down the 4, leave the inner function alone. Subtract 1 to get the new exponent. We're differentiating the outermost function. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of 3x plus 4 is a 3. So f prime is 12 times 3x plus 4 quantity cubed. Now we're ready to find f double prime. f double prime of x. Three, use the generalized power rule again. 3 times 12, that's a 36, times 3x plus 4, squared times the derivative of the inside function is still 3. 36 times 3 gives me a 108, times 3x plus 4, quantity squared. And... There's my answer for the second derivative in terms of x. Now they want us to find f double prime evaluated at 0, f double prime evaluated at 1, and f double prime evaluated at negative 3. So plugging in 0 for x, plugging in 0 for x, we get a 0 plus 4, that's a 4, so 4 squared is 13. That gives me a 108 times 16. Which gives me a 1,728. Now we're plugging in 1. Plugging in 1, we'd have a uh, 3 plus 4, that's a 7. So we wind up with a 108 times 49, which gives me a 5,292 for f double prime at 1. And finally, f double prime at 3. Plugging in the negative 3, that would be a negative 9 plus 4, that's a negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25, so it's a 108 times 25, which gives me a 2,700 for my final answer. And I have another one I want to do, an application using first derivatives. I mean, pardon me, second derivatives. This involves uh, a velocity and acceleration. The rate of, uh, the function s of t equals t cubed minus 12t minus 8 gives the distance from a starting point at time t of a particle moving along a line. Find the velocity and acceleration functions. Then find the velocity and acceleration at t equals 0 and t equals 1. Assume that time is measured in seconds and distance is measured in centimeters. Therefore, velocity will be in terms of centimeters per second and acceleration will be in terms of centimeters per second per second. So, uh, first of all, 
Let me write this problem down. Let me write the function down. Mm. S of t, our position function for this uh, particle that's moving along, is t cubed minus 12t minus 8. Remember, velocity is defined. If you look up the word velocity in the dictionary, the definition of velocity is the rate of change of the position of some uh, particle or object. So for velocity, it's the rate of change of position. So the rate of change of a function is given by the derivative. So we differentiate the, oh, I'm sorry about that, uh, there. The motion sensor turned off the lights. They don't detect that I'm in here. So coming back here, we differentiate. That gives me a 3t squared minus 12 for my velocity function. Velocity is defined to be the rate of change of position. The rate of change is given by the derivative. Now acceleration. Acceleration is defined to be the rate of change of velocity. If you work, look up the word uh, acceleration in a dictionary, it's going to say it's the rate of change of the velocity of some object. So that means we have to differentiate the velocity function. And in terms of the position function, that would be the second derivative. You knew second derivatives had to tie in here somewhere. Velocity is the first derivative of position. Acceleration is the second derivative of position. Differentiating the velocity function, we get just a 6t. So, now they want us to find the, the problem asks for us to find, here's velocity, there's acceleration. Looking back at the problem, they want us to find the velocity and acceleration when t is zero and when t is one. So, we're gonna have to plug in one and zero into our velocity function. Plugging in zero, we get a negative 12 centimeters per second squared. That means the object is slowing down. Uh, pardon me, I'm jumping ahead to a uh, uh, velocity. Forget that rem uh, remark. I mean, I'm uh, jumping ahead to acceleration, so forget that remark. Plugging in the one, we get a three minus 12, which is a negative nine. Now, velocity. We want the velocity at zero, and we want the, not at velocity, I'm saying the wrong word. We want acceleration at zero and acceleration at one. Maybe I should just shut up and write the stuff down without talking. So, acceleration at zero is zero. That means at time t equals zero, the particle, uh, the velocity is not changing. The velocity is constant at that moment in time. The particle is not speeding up. It's not slowing down. At one, six times one is just six. And that's centimeters per second squared. That's a positive number. That means that one second at time t equals one, the object is, uh, the velocity is increasing. So positive uh, acceleration means the object, the velocity is increasing, it's speeding up. A negative acceleration would mean that the object is slowing down. Maybe it's a car approaching a stop sign or something. Anyway, let me box in all of these. So coming back to the problem, the velocity function we said was 3t squared minus 12. The acceleration function we said was 6t. The velocity at t equals 0 was negative 12. The velocity at t equals 1 was negative 9. The acceleration at 0 was 0. And the acceleration at 1 was 6. And they've already taken care of the units for us, so we don't have to worry about typing in that centimeters uh, per second for the velocity function. We don't need to worry about typing in that centimeters per second per second for acceleration. They've already typed all that in for us. 
So once again, this is Timothy Brucella, and I was just doing some uh, business calculus for my business calculus class. Bye-bye.